Hey everyone, Chris here and welcome to my channel. In today's Five on Friday, I'm going to bring to you my winter covers wrap up vlog. So I've read three of my winter covers and it is far past time for me to check in and let you know whether they were saying winter or not. First up, I have Death in the Park by London Lovett and I gave this book five stars. But unfortunately, it was set in May, not in winter. So in this book, we're following Sunny, who has moved to the town her sisters live in and is currently working to fix up an inn. And her day job is a kind of news reporter. She works for like the local paper and she's hoping to really make an impact because she was living in a bigger city. And so she feels like she really knows what she's doing, but kind of gets like puff pieces until she ends up finding herself in the middle of a murder investigation and really starts to sink her teeth into that and trying to stay one step ahead of the detective on the case, especially considering she wasn't assigned to cover the murder at her day job. I absolutely loved the mystery in this book. I loved seeing how Sunny put the pieces together and used her smarts and the skills she picked up as a news reporter to kind of put the pieces together and stay one step ahead of the detective. I like seeing her relationship with her sisters. Uh, I'm very curious about her plans for the inn. And there was a giant twist at the end, which is the thing that pushed it to the five star range. It was definitely in the fours until the twist at the end, and I cannot wait to read the second book. But alas, it not being set in winter means I'm so far zero for five. The next book I read was Then She Was Gone by Lisa Jewell, and I gave this book 3.75 stars, and it was not set in winter. It was set in a bunch of different seasons. So in this book, a young girl named Ellie goes missing, and we're kind of following her mom, Laurel, 10 years after Ellie has disappeared, and we're seeing Laurel's life and how she's still hung up on the fact that her daughter disappeared and is still hoping somehow, some way that she will find out the truth behind what happened to her daughter. This is interspersed with depictions of Ellie. So we get like flashbacks of Ellie seeing what actually happened to Ellie in the lead up to her disappearance and then after. So this is mainly, like I said, a thriller about Laurel who wants to know what happens to her daughter. This was a decent thriller. It wasn't anything special, at least in my opinion, like I said, 3.75 stars. It, it was interesting to see Laurel start to put the pieces together, given that it had been 10 years. It was also interesting to see how this really changed her mom's life and just completely changed the track that she was on because Laurel just kind of stopped when her daughter went missing and it affected her relationship with her husband and with both of her other kids who were still there. I thought it was quite obvious what had happened, which is another reason I got 3.75 stars. There wasn't really anything that surprised me, no twists, anything like that. So it was a decent thriller. Like, I mean, I didn't put it down and I read right through it, but it wasn't one of my favorites. And with it not being set in winter, that means I'm now over two. And then the last book I've read so far is Bear Town by Frederick Bachman. I'm giving this book 3.75 stars. And this book was set in winter for the most part. It's set in like early March. And I think by the end, we might be sneaking past when winter technically ends. Because like spring starts around like, what, March 20th or so every year. So it might be slightly in the spring, but I think it counts as being winter because for the majority of it, I think it's set in the beginning of March. So in this book, we're in Beartown and we're getting to see a bunch of different residents of Beartown, which is a very much hockey town. And we're looking at the junior team who is getting ready to go to hopefully the finals. And it's going to be very important to this town because they need the revenue that that would bring and the attention that would bring because the town is kind of suffering. And we're getting to see coaches' points of view and the general manager of the hockey program and several different hockey players' points of view and just a bunch of different people who live in this town's points of view. And something happens that completely changes things. And I don't want to say what it is because I think it's important that you go into it not knowing at least I liked going into it not knowing, but you can tell very quickly that something is going to happen and you don't quite know what and how it's going to affect everybody, but it is very, a huge deal. It is a big thing that happens and it is kind of a reason we're looking at all of these different points of view and post that, seeing how everybody handles this big thing that happens. The reason this gets 3.75 stars is because 
I was like, just can, can we get to the point now? Uh, it took way too long for us to get to the, the, the big thing that happens. And I think I wanted it to get there a little bit faster. Some of the POVs I liked more than others. I do know this is a series and I'm very intrigued to see where the second book goes. Because when I was reading this, this felt very much like a standalone. So I'm very curious to see what happens in the second book and kind of who we're following that we saw in the first book. I was hoping to like it more than I did because I've loved everything else I've read by Frederick Bachman. But like I said, this just didn't work. The pace was a little too slow for me and I just wanted it to get to the point. So that was a little frustrating, but I still did like the book. And I liked it enough to want to continue the series. And on a positive note, it was say a winner. So I am now one for three. So I have finished my last two winter covers, so it is time to check in and tell you about them. First, I read The Boy, The Bird, and The Coffin Maker, and this was not set in winter. I also gave it four and a half stars. So this book starts in winter, but then moves towards spring. So it's got two seasons in it, so it doesn't count as being set fully in the season of winter. And in this, we're following a man named Alberto who is a coffin maker who has lost his wife and children and ends up coming across a orphan boy named Tito and his bird and invites them into his house. From there they develop a relationship but some things happen that make it dangerous and Tito's safety is threatened and Alberto has to keep him safe. I absolutely love the relationship between Alberto and Tito and how it developed. It's definitely a found family and it gave me all of those cozy vibes. I liked the whimsical nature of this book because there is a bit of whimsy and magic to the world, though I don't know that I would necessarily go as far as to call it like a hard fantasy. It's more of a light fantasy, but I really, really enjoyed it. Um, it's a quick read as well because it's it's rather short. Um, but the main point is seeing the relationship between Alberto and Tito develop, and it is just very lovely and sweet, and I really, really enjoyed it. So, four and a half stars, but not set in winter. Then I read Winter Garden, and this was also not set in winter. But I also gave this book four and a half stars, so it's nice to see Kristen Hanna return to form. So in this book, we're following sisters Meredith and Nina whose father has recently died, and they're trying to take care of their mother, who they've never been close with. And on his deathbed, their father had enacted a promise from his wife that he would finish telling the girls this fairy tale and really tell it all the way to the end. And the story is really about the sisters learning more about their mother through listening to her tell this fairy tale. And I just really enjoyed this one and <laughs> was so glad to see Kristen Hanna return to form because it has been a while since I've loved a Kristen Hanna book. This had all of the feels that I normally expect from Kristen Hanna. It had such good family vibes. There was a historical aspect to it and it was just an absolutely brilliant read and I loved every minute of it. It did start in winter, but we got to see other seasons. So this makes me one for five. I forgot to mention that with the bird, the boy, the bird, and the coffin maker, but I am now officially one for five since I'm all done. So quick reminder, four and a half stars, not set in winter. Four and a half stars, not set in winter. I read Death in the Park by London Lovett, gave it five stars, and it was not set in winter. I read Then She Was Gone which I gave 3.75 stars and was not set in winter. And then the only book I read that was set in winter was Bear Town, and I also gave this one 3.75 stars. So not my best round of winter covers or seasonal covers. I only got one right. Though I will note if memory serves, like I said, these two definitely had part set in winter. And I think, I think then she was gone encompassed a lot of seasons. So like I said, these ones were definitely set in winter, and winter was a big part of this one, even though it wasn't set in winter. And this one was at least half of it, maybe a little bit more, was set in winter. So I wasn't completely off, and the winter vibes weren't completely wrong for the covers. It's just that the entire book wasn't set in winter. So that's it for this round of seasonal covers. Hopefully spring will go better. If you guys participated were you right were you wrong 
If so, let me know in the comment section below. All of my social media is linked in the description below if you'd like to come chat with me. If you've made it this far in the video, leave me winter-themed emojis. Like this video and subscribe to my channel, and I'll talk to you next time. Bye!